Today, we're gonna to look at some cheap, cheap burr grinders, some electric burr grinders that you can buy online right now for in the region of 50 pounds. That was my kind of target budget here. They're in and around there, going from about 39.95 up to 53.95, but I suspect those prices change pretty often. So the question I wanna to ask today is, is it worth spending just a little bit of money and getting into the coffee grinding game? Or is in fact that a terrible waste of money and you should save your pennies and buy something a little bit better? Are these useful to have at home, or are these just contributing to the endless e-waste that is sinking our planet further into the abyss? Let's find out. We're not gonna be doing the most exhaustive tests here. We're gonna be doing some pretty simple tests. We're gonna first just walk through each of these different grinders and have a look at the features, how they're built, how they feel. Then we'll pull some shots with them. Most of them have an uh, espresso setting. Can this actually pull espresso shots? Is it in any way useful with an espresso machine? Then we'll brew as close to as possible identical filter coffee with each of them, and I'll taste those blind against another benchmark of a really good grinder just to see how big the gap is. Is, is it gonna be disgusting in comparison to a good brew, or is it gonna be pretty close? And then we'll come back at the end. I'll tell you if there's really any one that's better than the other, uh, and we'll find out, is it worth spending the money? First off, the grinders. Now this is the one I bought first. It's from Melita, it's called the Molino. And I saw it online and it was cheap and I was like, I, I, I wonder, how much does it suck? Is it good, is it bad? So it's had a bit more use than the other ones have here. Grind adjustment here on the side. Not a particularly enjoyable part of the process. A little safety switch on the hopper. There's a burr inside. With all of these grinders actually, it's pretty easy to remove the internal burr. Uh, and that's this here. We'll talk about the burrs maybe towards the end. They all look like cheap ceramic burrs. I don't know why they've got these extra screw holes in them here. That's not really a good thing for a grinder like this. Collects a lot of dirt, debris, old coffee, fines. Not what you want. Quick sound test. Sounds pretty awful. Sounds like a very cheap vacuum cleaner. The Cuisinart. This is about 43, 45 pounds. Uh, it's been around a good long time. Uh, I once bought one for someone, for a friend. I'm about to find out how bad I should feel about that. But it was a long time ago. Big start button, and then on here, you've got a sort of cup quantity selector. I presume that works via time. Sound-wise? <laughs> no, not very good. Adjustment. Big, chunky clicks. Doesn't feel particularly good. How you feel about how these look is kind of up to you. I don't think any of them are particularly beautiful. And probably the least beautiful is this one here. It's the DeLonghi. Very boxy, funny little lid on this one. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Yeah, pretty, pretty plasticky adjuster of grind there. Interestingly though, this adjuster at the front, which I presume is time, very nice. Why couldn't you use the same adjustment? This, again, super cheap. Uh, I think about 40 pounds I paid for it. Very much what you'd expect. Standard sort of hopper bin. And it sounds also very bad. Last one up, slightly funny one here. It's, it's branded the Andronicus World of Coffee, which used to be in Harrods. I don't think it's there anymore. Not a bad looking grinder. Power button in the sort of adjuster of cup quantity, which is stepless, which I suppose is nice. That one is the most Hoover sounding. And your grind adjustment on the side there. Now, they all look like they've got pretty much identical burrs, but they sound like they have different motors. We might get different grind profiles as a result. I don't know how well each of them have seated their burrs, how good their threading is. We're just gonna use the decent for this. We're just gonna pull some pretty standard, sort of seven, eight bar flatline shots, maybe a small decline at the end, a little bit of pre-infusion, but not so much that they would need to grind very, very fine. And we'll see if we get anything vaguely approaching espresso out of any of these. Dosing from this little thing is, is not the easiest thing in the world. So about 18 grams. I will say this does look pretty fine. So we might get some sort of espresso. Ooh. I thought we were gonna be okay for a second there. And then, shot's a bit quick. Uh, no. Brew too fast, not fine enough for espresso at its finest grind setting. Really difficult to get all the coffee out of this thing. Quite frustrating in that regard. True of most grind settings though with this thing. This is not a particularly good container and the static electricity on this thing is out of control. Let's move on. Now the Cuisinart sounds completely awful, but the static is something else. There is kind of coffee all over the lid, a huge amount up the top here, 
and then some sort of scatter around. It does look pretty fine. If you think I'm drinking that, you're probably right, actually. I'll give it a quick go. Let's have a taste. Ugh. No. Next. Now, I will say this one sounded better grinding than many of the others did. Same problem with an enormous amount of static here. All of these grinders pretty much are designed, I think, to be run full and use the little cup button to decide how much coffee they grind each time just by a simple timer mechanism. They sound better when they're full of coffee. They probably run more consistently when they're full of coffee. Uh, but I, I don't want to fill them with coffee. That feels like a staggering waste for this particular video. It's going to be a fast shot. I know you all enjoy watching me suffer, so cheers to you. Yeah, disgusting. Don't pull shots with this. It can't do espresso. <sighs> Trying to pour accurately from giant round things is not fun. Ooh. Ooh. That was in the window of good espresso which is quite a surprise. I'm a little bit impressed that this managed that, but just on the cusp. I would definitely want to be able to go finer than this if I was making espresso every day, but this is by far the finest of any of them. And the brew looked okay. Like, uh, didn't channel horribly, wasn't any of that kind of mess. Got a bit of texture. It's not beautifully extracted, but it is reasonably extracted. Like that's, not a great shot, actually. The finish isn't particularly good. It's not a great gr grinder, but it's just, in this test, I suppose this takes the win. So the filter coffee test. We've brewed a V60 with each of these, and I spent some time with them, dialing them in, and, and that was very interesting and very useful. So they're all extracting at a very similar kind of percentage. They're all about the same strength. The end brews. We use 20 in to 300 on a, a V60. And so on the end here, we also have, from the old Lynn Weber, a kind of benchmark. Now that grinder costs more than 50 times what this grinder costs, which is a lot. And, and we'll talk about that grinder another time. But for now, I just wanted a benchmark of what a really good grinder tasted like against these things here. I could have done this as a blind test, I guess, but to be honest, it's never gonna be truly properly blind. So we may as well have a little taste and see if there are any obvious differences. Like I said, they've all been kind of benchmarked through uh, extraction testing with a little refractometer. It's, uh, it's slurping time. Now this is very interesting. They've all cooled down a little bit, which has made it easier for me to taste. And if I'm truly, truly honest, with the exception of this cup here, they are all very similar. None of these taste particularly bad, actually. It tastes like good coffee, and it, I think it was, and it was good water, and it was good technique. So you can tell there's a missing piece of the puzzle, though, because they all have this kind of muddiness, for want of a better word. There's a sort of textural intensity and a slight powderiness to them, and a sort of muddiness and a lack of clarity of flavor. Here, with a, a much better grinder, you've got a ton of clarity. You've got more sweetness, you've got less bitterness. There's still nice mouthfeel and texture. That's what you're getting with a, a better grinder. Now, I, I'd say of these particular brews, I like this one the best, and I like this one the least. This one just tastes like it had a lot more fines in it. In, in terms of flavor, they're nowhere near a high-end grinder in, in terms of enjoyment. They all have more bitterness. They all have more astringency. They all have less sweetness, even the better tasting one here. So we need to just answer the most important question. If you've got 50 pounds or you've got the equivalent in US dollars or whichever currency is your currency, should you buy one of these grinders? Should you start grinding coffee at home if you don't grind coffee at home? And that is a good question. Throughout my entire coffee career, I have advocated for people grinding their own coffee at home. The smell of coffee grinding is an absolute delight. Fresh coffee is better than pre-ground coffee. So you'd think I would say yes to should you buy one of these grinders. But buying something should improve your life. It should be a net benefit. And with these, I'm not sure there's a net benefit. There's an improvement. 
it's going to taste better than, say, stale, very, very old pre-ground coffee. You'll be able to adjust a grind for a brewing method, for example. There are some benefits, but the downsides with these grinders are simply too large. They sound awful. I could not imagine being up at six in the morning waiting to have coffee, listening to, to these things grind coffee. It would, it would ruin my morning before it had begun. It's a very unpleasant sound. And I know I'm running them empty sometimes, which sounds way worse than running them full, but I think a lot of people watching this channel would want to grind to order and not leave beans in hoppers for days or weeks on end. For each and every one of these grinders, for me, the static issue is a deal breaker. It's so annoying to try and get ground coffee out of these dosing bins with static being everywhere. And it either means you have this accumulation of, of ground coffee inside the bins, or you end up with static all over your counter or on yourself. It's, it's miserable. Again, it's just not how I want to start my day. And for that bump and improvement, and it is better than pre-ground stale coffee, but, but at such a cost. And they're all maddening in unique and kind of interesting ways. This little grinder, as you're grinding towards the end, ground coffee is flying back out of the bursets into the bean hopper, which is messy and looks terrible and, and is a, a mess to clean. This thing, because the hopper is your grind adjuster, if you have it adjusted like this, it becomes asymmetrical and it just visually really bothers me. Dosing out of this round bin with any sort of accuracy was really quite frustrating and the hopper, the fit, was just wasn't a pleasure to use in any way. It was ergonomically unpleasant. None of them has a particularly good build quality. None of them feel like they're made to last in any meaningful way. And if it's going to be a, a sort of stepping stone for you, I would just try and skip that step. I would try and save your money and start with an entry-level Wilfer or Baratza grinder or something of that kind if you're making filter coffee at home. I, I just wouldn't necessarily pick one of these up because I don't think they're fun or enjoyable to use. And I think that's really important. I would say save your pennies. I would say save your pennies for a grinder that is more enjoyable to use. I don't think we should reward manufacturers for building grinders like this. They are wasteful and unnecessary, and, and I, I don't think we should buy them, gift them, anything like that. Just save your money and buy something better, and you will enjoy using it a lot more, and you'll enjoy your coffee a lot more. Now, despite my angriness, I am grateful to my Patreon supporters for giving me a budget to go and buy these things uh, and test them, uh, and that way hopefully share some information with you. Usually I give away anything I review to my Patreon audience, but if they don't want these, then keep an eye on my Twitter or Instagram, and if they're going to a wider giveaway, I'll be sure to let you know. Do you have one of these grinders? Have you had a very different experience to me? Are you leaving it full of beans and therefore it's not as annoying in a sort of auditory way? What are you doing? Are you, are you happy with these grinders? Did it feel like a good investment? Are you happy with the bump in quality? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, but for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.